Hey internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and I'm here in Minneapolis, Minnesota and uh, doing an interview with someone that we had a little bit of technical difficulties because that's just the way that the internet works these days but her name is Nina and I think the last name is Schluntz? Schluntz. Schluntz. Yes. See, I don't, yeah. at first yeah. I saw it, it looked like <laughs> Schultz but it, there's a little L in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so where, what part of what the country are you in? Uh, I'm an American, yes. Um, originally from Nebraska. I move around a bit because of my regular job. Okay. Yeah, you got to get around once in a while. Have, yeah. you, have you ever been out of the country? Yes, a couple times. Nowhere fun, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we got to put that on your bucket list, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you married, got kids, you wild and crazy single, or what's... What's your situation? Uh, just married and have a husband. And then, as you can see, occasionally there's yeah, oh, a there couple go. cats in the house <laughs> that will make appearances. So. That's, all, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so from what I understand, you're an author. Are you also a speaker? Because a lot of times authors are speakers. Do you speak for the groups? Nope. I haven't got into that. Um, been writing um, pretty much all my life. When I was a kid, I was writing little stories to entertain my friends. Uh, I put my friends in stories. It was just kind of a natural thing I always wanted to do. I grew up on a farm, so, you know, very, like, fantasy and writing was my way to get away from the boredom. Ah, I got it. back then, you know, you <laughs> didn't have internet on the farm. It right. was very remote, so. You don't run down yes. to the nightclub or anything like that. <laughs> Especially not when you're a kid, you know. It's like a mile to get anywhere, so. So do you have a recent book or do you have multiple books or is it just a... Yeah, I have. I mean, my first one came out in 2004. Oh, wow. And now I have, yeah, I'm here to promote a recent one that just came out a couple days ago. It's part of a series about dragons and shape-shifting with a romance side to it. That's up my alley. I'm a magician by trade, so I get to understand all that uh, mystical stuff. So. Oh, you would like this one then because this one delves into uh, mages where the dragons can acquire a human that can do magic. Okay. So, I like yep. it. So you said a series. How many in the series or is it kind of like open-ended? Um, right now, this is the third one that's just come out. Um, hopefully, I'm going to do five. That would The fifth book would give the series the best closure. Okay. But we'll see. Yeah, it's like uh, you know the chicken soup for the soul stuff, the way that took off, because it was just one, then it expanded, and the good old Harry Potter series, that's gotten fairly elaborate, so who knows yep, where yeah. it goes, right? Yeah, it started off, it was going to be just one, but it got so long that I had to break it into two books. Wow. So a lot of people did review that they didn't like the ending in the first one, because it was kind of a cliffhanger, and I was like, <laughs> well, I didn't want it to be a huge book, so I had to choose a point to just... End it. <laughs> well, I think sometimes you like cliffhangers. That's what kind of gets you to go to the next level, and that's what creates the mystery. I mean, that's why you probably read the book in the first place to solve the mystery, right? Yep. <laughs> and then after I did the two, uh, my publisher was like, you should do a third at least, so it's, you know, a series. So and can you can you just give the title of the series, or how does it all... Oh, I have a few, so... Oh, good. Visuals. Visual aids. Visual aids. <laughs> So this is the first one. Off to the side a little more. Other way. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> it's not flipping the title for you, so that does look backwards. But um, Anakura is the, I know it's a hard to pronounce. That's the overall series name. Mm -hmm. And then the first one is Dragons and Healers. So you can always just search Dragon and Healers and that'll come up. Perfect. And then the second one is Immortal Black Dragons. And then the new one that we're doing is, and that painting you see up in the back, that's the bigger version of the cover, because it just turned out that good. Okay, what's and it, what it's called The First Generation. And then the nifty thing with these is, uh, the, if you get the paperback, onto the back is the dragon on all of these. Okay, so that's the overlying theme, it looks like, is a dragon. Yep. yep. So the main element that goes through this is... It starts off, it's regular Earth, and there's a dragon invasion. Like, the dragons are aliens in this series. 
and they come here and the first book you're already like a hundred years in like after this invasion happened and the dragons have evolved their shapeshifters and the anakura is actually a name of a person it's when a dragon touches a human who has done the dragon a favor and this triggers the anakura which turns the human into a healer and he can heal anybody but now he has this power in him that other people can feel and sense and if somebody touches him other than the dragon they drain that power out of him so the dragon mm. has to be paired with that human now and act as a conduit for the healing. Got it. And then an element that they didn't predict is if you kill, if any random like dragon human, anybody kills that human that's now an Anakra, they become immortal. So greed takes over and everybody wants to kill these Anakras that show up. And that kind of casts the world into another chaos because these Anakras are getting made and then murdered sometimes within hours. So one dragon, um, the black dragon, goes and he kills his own Anakra. Like he accidentally makes one and then he keeps him alive for a while and then he ends up killing his own. And he <laughs> finds out that makes him immortal. Wow. And he then goes on a rampage and he kills all the Anakras and all the immortals that have killed Anakras. And he kind of becomes the dragon king. Got it. <laughs> and he brings peace because everybody stops making these healers because they know he's just going to kill them. And then that's where the book starts is he's already taken over and the humans and the dragons live in segregation. Because if you accidentally touch each other, you might become a healer and then you know you're going to die. That ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> so the first book is about 20 years. There have not been any new healers. And then one is accidentally made. And this dragon king has to deal with it. And he ends up falling in love with one of these healers that's made. So now instead of just killing him, he's like, well, maybe I'll try to keep him alive. And... Wow. Yeah, so it adds a new twist of is he going to keep these healers alive? Is he going to kill them? And then well, can he even keep them alive? Because, again, it's so much of a if somebody accidentally touches the person, they're going to want to drain the energy. Yeah, so stay out of the coffee shops. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So this sounds very fascinating. That, that, that Was this all just kind of like came out of your dreams or your mind or your imagination? Or how, did, how do you come yep. up with ideas? It's one of those, I mean, as with anyone that's creative, you get the inspiration usually from other people. You know, you take little bits. So this actually started, I was reading a shape-shifting romance about dragons, and it was very deep into the erotica aspect. And I was reading it, and I was like, you know, this author is really limiting themselves. If they had made this into a kid's version, you know, a lot of people would have enjoyed this if they'd toned it down. Mm -hmm. So I actually was trying to make a kid-friendly, or at least teen-friendly, shape-shifting dragon book. Got it. So, But then, as my story went, and I had this one scene where the Dragon King was with this new Anakra, and they were in a cave, and there was so much chemistry between the two, that I was like, I have to make this into a romance. It... <laughs> avoiding that would have done the book an injustice like i could see it was missing something sure so i gotta ask is there any possibility of this going into the movie realm <laughs> oh <laughs> that's i think every author's hope you would yeah well you never know you never know how that stuff yeah. gets picked up i mean it happens fluky that's that's kind of my philosophy with the synergy cafe thing is you just get the stuff out on the internet and when people see it something might happen you there are no guarantees, but who knows? Stranger things have happened, right? Oh yeah. So and I'll I don't, go ahead. I don't. I don't like to do these too long because I don't, don't like to take too much people's time. I want them to be able to see it from the beginning to the end. But um, I do want to know how do they get a hold of you if they want to get the books? Is there a easy to find domain name? And I'll, I'll put them domains in the in the body copy and stuff too. Yep. Um. Obviously, just a Google search of my name. 
So everything will come up. I'm on Twitter. I have a blog. Um, and Meisner13, M-I-Z-N-E-R-13. That'll bring up my Twitter and my blog where I post all my books. And I sometimes do movie reviews, book reviews on there just to keep the page fresh. And it's not just saturated with book promotion that way. Sure. Okay. So and Meisner, M-I-S-N-E-R? M-I-Z. N E R. M I Z N E R. M I Z N E R 13. Yep. It's Perfect. one of those, that's my married name. The Slants is my maiden name. But to keep my readers from getting confused, I keep them all published under the original name. Got it. So, so I said this lots of books out. So this so is the first um, romance science fiction fantasy. It's very, it sounds very intriguing. I'm, I'm not a big reader, but my wife is. <laughs> I'm going to share this with her. She loves reading. Um, so before I sign this one off, I like, I always like to ask my favorite question. That's the big why question. Why are you doing this as opposed to why didn't you start like an organic uh, restaurant or why aren't you like a ski instructor or, or why aren't you like a grade school teacher or a college professor? Why did you choose to do this? Well, it's one of those, the stories are in my head. You know, I'm always, there's always that narration in my head of the story the okay. fantasy the pictures in my head and the only way to get them out is to put them on page and write them and i like that i can give people an outlet you know a break from their life that they may not enjoy every day you Got know it. the day-to-day -day grind it gives those people a little break because my books are always the goal is to be entertaining and give you that escape and I think it also gives a person a, a different perspective on stuff because it kind of sounds weird that this dragon would kill himself kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it's, it's, it makes you think, how, does that, how can that work? So that, it's well, really cool. It makes your brain think. And one thing I tried to do with these books was with that segregation of the humans and dragons, there's all the misconceptions as well. So once they trigger that Anakra thing and they're bound to each other, because if, the, oh, I don't think I mentioned, if the Anakra dies, the dragon dies once they're linked together. Got it. So it forces them to get to know each other, even though they were living before in this world where they couldn't. So I'd like to think that that kind of teaches people a little bit about ignorance and different cultures. And boundaries. Yep. Don't get too close. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Although hopefully as the world evolves, you know, in these books, humans and dragons will find a way to be together and not have sure. to live in that segregation. Uh, you know, um, I'll, I'll sign this off pretty soon, but real quick, that's kind of my whole take on this whole political thing. If people quit doing this polarity thing and they get into a neutral space and kind of discuss stuff, you're going to come up with yep. a solution. But as long as you keep on sword fighting, nothing will ever happen. It'll just continue. So. Your book has hope for the, for the world, hope for humanity. <laughs> okay, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to beam this up to YouTube and propagate it out to the world. If you'll do the same, that'll create the synergy to make it go. So thanks yep, again absolutely. for taking the time. Peace. Yep, thank you for having me.